All fires are bad, but when the building's height far exceeds the length of the ladder, then firefighting and rescue become a whole new ball game. Shortly after the Grenfell tragedy in 2017, the Gibraltar government carried out a fire safety review of high-rises. But with more and more tall buildings under construction, I wanted to see for myself how safe they really were. If there's one advantage Gibraltar has when it comes to fire safety, it's its size, because it only takes the fire and rescue services minutes to get to anywhere. But what about tall buildings such as this? Hassan Centenary Terraces Block 4 is the tallest building in Gibraltar, 110 meters. And as you can see, usually conditions are very dry and windy, perfect for fanning huge fires. So what happens if a fire does break out in a building like this? The GFRS Chief Fire Officer joined me at Hassan Centenary Terraces and after a health and safety induction, Colin Ramirez took me on a fire safety tour of the building. High-rise buildings have uh, the tendency to produce uh, the worst possible scenarios for a firefight. Um, you hear things like wind-driven fires that, that, that create that, that blowtorch effect uh, that can reach to temperatures above 600 degrees Celsius. Um, you get flashovers, backdrafts. So all the kinds, kind of or types of fires can happen in a, in a high-rise building. To fight fires, you need lots of water. So how do you get it to the higher floors? So basically, this is the outlet um, where we connect all our equipment and so on. So we are standing now in what we call the protected staircase. This is supposed to be sterile at all times, so doors should be locked, uh, closed at all times. Um, in order to keep it sterile and this is like a safe passage to, to safety. So what we would do now, for example, you'd have possibly the fire two floors above. This is where we would call the, the bridgehead. Uh, we would set up two floors below in safe space, safe air, so we connect to the wet riser which is permanent charge all the time um, and then just make our way up to the fire floor. There's a wet riser outlet on every single floor, as well as fire safety doors and a smoke extractor. And while the advice is not to use the lifts to evacuate in the event of a fire, one of these will be used exclusively by the firefighters. So what about the apartments themselves? With safety being the priority, in the event of a fire, should people evacuate or stay put? There is what, what you hear a lot in the news, a stay put policy that, 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 that was heard a lot during the Grenfell tragedy um, and there, was a lot, there were a lot of shortcomings during the Grenfell uh, incident that led to the tragic loss of life. Um, the advice of stay put is, works on the principle that your flat is considered a safe haven um, and that was the thought at the time at Grenfell. Uh, what happened at Grenfell was completely unprecedented and this is there's nothing like that at all in terms of the, the building materials utilised and, and so on. So the staple policy works around the principle of my flat is a safe haven and any fires in other uh, flats should not um, develop into my property. So you are considered to be in a, in, in, a, in a location of safety. As well as smoke detectors and sprinklers, the building has the added advantage of an evacuation alert system. So all residents will be informed if and when there's an emergency. So that allows the fire service um, to interact with, with each independent uh, apartment. So we will determine whether or not we want maybe the two floors above the fire, uh, the fire floor or not to be evacuated. It is resource exhaustive um, and this would entail um, bringing uh, crews in on a recall basis and so on. Um, if you look at Grenfell for example, they deployed 200 firefighters to the one block. We have 12 firefighters on shift on any day. Uh, yesterday in London there was a fire in a, in a restaurant and they deployed 70 firefighters just to a restaurant. So you can see the, the disparity in resources that there are, but we depend a lot on the building helping us out and the sprinkler systems helping us out. Uh, this is why we do a lot of work behind the scenes. So can I ask you then, in terms of fire safety, a residence in a building as tall as this, every bit as safe as they would be in any other building in terms of you know, tackling fires? No, I'm, I'm confident that this is a safe building as well as all the other high-rise buildings that we're building in, in Gibraltar. Um, will we ever have enough resources to deal with an incident? Listen, nobody, uh, I don't think anyone has enough resources. We're working closely with governments to get, and I think many people will have seen 
the two ladder platforms that, that we, we paraded around testing them. But at the same time, it's not just about the safety of the residents, but we also work very hard to ensure that the building adapts to our operational needs. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of work behind the scenes uh, done in that, in that aspect. And I am pretty confident that, that, that we do everything that we can to, to, to ensure that people are, are, are safe in, in these buildings. Comforting words indeed, and ones that should make sleeping in these high-rises a lot easier. But be sure to check with your building management company or the GFRS for all your fire safety guidance and advice.